was just going, and after the Ten Commandments, they must have groomed it on the outside, and I just went down, and I mean, it's a bummer, but hopefully I'm still in the title contention, and just got to look forward and try to get the next few moto wins, the last two I have, so. Hey, great work. Who would you like to thank, Antonio? I'd definitely like to thank my mom at home, my sister, my Papa Joe, um, Roseville Yamaha, Posey Motors, Scott Goggles, Alias, Garnet, Rusty Holland. We worked on some starts, and it somewhat paid off right now. Too bad we couldn't get the win, but also Andy, MEP, Matty Rice, Wes, uh, my boy Trey Green at home. He's been helping me a lot. Mama Green, all of them, Cameron Cannon, and Mama Cannon, and Pops. You know, everybody's been giving me pointers, Darian and I. My boy, uh, Tyler West, that one's for you. Um, everybody just at home couldn't do it without him, so thank you. Man, he's got a big squad running around out there. That's Antonio Calvano. He gets the whole shot. We are done here on the Race Tech podium. We'll send it back up to the tower. Jason Wygant, what do you got for us? All right, we're going to take it back up here in the tower. Put that headset on there, sir. And uh, I know you're probably tired of the shrill and harsh sounds of myself and Kevin Kelly, so we're going to give you the soothing, uh, smooth, silky voice of Tom Shields of <laughs> Freestone County Raceway in Wortham, Texas. Uh, I'll, we'll get to Tom actually in a moment. Let me just update you. Lap one of college 16 to 24. Richard Jackson, 2-2 in the motos coming into this. Hull shot and uh, up front, but got passed now by Ryan Surratt, who is your first moto winner. Surratt sixth in Moto2, trying to, or sorry, third in Moto2, trying to get the Moto win. This is the first third Moto of the week. We will crown a champion. Ryan Surratt needs this Moto win. He's got the lead right now. Tom Shields, let's talk some majors. We're not just racing, of course, here at Loretta's. We have a lot of great amateur events coming our, uh, everyone's way. You know, yeah. Jason, it is important that uh, it everybody looks at the OEMs. They, they really want to know about the duration of the rider they want to see not just here they're watching all year long oh yeah so when it comes to racing it's going to be you know the featured events under the ama banner as well as the major events and the major events all of those being here now of course it's the national that's yep. where it's all at but the uh the others are the ones that follow underneath this and that's daytona starting in the uh, springtime and then we go to freestone for the gs7 spring championship yep so that we're looking forward to that but right up next for the for these riders, they're going to be looking at Baja Brawl yep. as one of the next AMA featured events. And uh, Mini Olympics, of course, in uh, Thanksgiving. Mini O's. Uh, traditionally, gosh, 40-something, uh, uh, probably now in its 80th year, I guess. Something like that. Yeah. It feels that way. No, yeah. it, it, I think the first Thanksgiving, the first Thanksgiving with the Pilgrims, Plymouth Mass, they also had a GP, a TT, Supercross, and Motocross at Gainesville, Florida. goes back to the first Thanksgiving. That event's been around that long. Well... If they broke bread, that yeah. could have been a great place. Oh, they well, they probably broke oranges. <laughs> that's right. So uh, that's the uh, yeah down in Florida, Gatorback Cycle Park, Mini Olympics been running Thanksgiving forever. weekend yep. every year. What a tradition! The families are off, so it's a great time for the families to stay together, just like we always see every year right here at the ranch. Okay, and then we uh, roll through, uh, as you said, spring. We have Daytona and uh, uh, Texas. We have Mammoth. Uh, leaving anything out? No, out of okay. the majors. Yeah, that's kind of how it rolls, really. The yep. majors are all about uh, starting in the springtime. Everybody sees where they're at right now, but then it's all the new gear. Every new bikes are going to show up at Mini O's. They're going to see where they are on the new bikes. And then when they come to the springtime, they've taken off about four months. Yeah, that's And right. then they're going to go, all right, well, let's see what we've done in the last four months, and let's go at it, reload, go to Daytona, destination, the parents. Dads get to take their Harley down there and That's enjoy right. the week. It's bike week, Daytona Supercross, nothing like it. That's, uh, yeah, there were, there were a lot of races that were all pretty big in their own right. Kind of got out of hand maybe five or six years ago. It seemed like literally every other week there was a yeah. big amateur race. And I think the riders and their families and the teams and sponsors got confused. Which are the races that we have to go to because it's hard an amateur level to race and keep crisscrossing the country every week. They're not getting paid to do it uh, like the pros are. Well, and the beauty of it, too, is 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 just like in this race now, you know, Ryan Surratt, we've watched all these kids come up through the ranks. 
but when you had all of these events, I mean, there was 10, 12 amateur events that wanted to be called a, a national, and, that, yeah. and there was only one national. That's here at Loretta's. Yep. The bottom line is, is that now under the AMA banner and the AMA's guidance, now we have the majors, those five events, including this one, and they're all under one rule, under one set of rules. That makes the class, gives, gives it the parity and the fairness that we're always trying to strive for. Yeah, pretty similar across the board. Watching a good battle as Ryan Surratt's out front trying to lock down this title with a 1-3-1 moto scores. Uh, that will be a close battle. Richard Jackson is looking at 2-2-2. Two, two, two. If it ends like this, he's in second. So Surratt would edge him by a point for the championship. And Sam Redmond is in this forward battle. You can see it on your screen. Sam Redmond and Colin Thompson. That's the battle you've been watching. These two guys have been side by side for the last lap and a half. I mean, literally side by side. You can't get any more side by side. And now the 80 of Will Lofstrom has made the pass on Sam Redmond to take over third. Nice little, he take that took tabletop right out of the finish line and just cleared it all. And that's a lot of riders haven't been doing that. Man, yeah, it tracks finally coming around. That's going to be one of the toughest things. I know you're involved intimately, especially at the uh, Freestone County Raceway there in Texas. The problem is there's so much pressure on you guys. You can't just say, if you're racing a 12 race series or a 17 race series like a Supercross and you get a mud race and the track's tough, well, hey, it was the same for everyone. We'll ha get it right next week. I mean, these people are basing their whole lives around your track, your race, everything going off without a hitch. It's hard to pull it off right and make it happen. Well, it is. And, you know, at the amateur ranks, a lot of the stepping stones that you don't get is, is the length of the race. Yeah. Where at the majors, we're trying to strive again to give them more laps, give them more time on the track. Of course, Loretta's has always been brutal. Uh, oh, yeah. and, and the elements that uh, the staff has had to deal with here Man. this week, I have not. I've said it time and time again to people coming up and asking me. I don't envy MX Sports right now and having <laughs> to deal with what they're doing. Uh, but what an excellent job to, uh, to bring a, a, an event that was – basically about six hours behind, almost a full day behind, and to try and make sure that they still get their three motos, everybody's still getting their sight laps. Uh, you know, vitally important to, for the safety of any riders to take that sight lap. Yeah, and on that topic, uh, I've just gotten the news. We are going back to our originally scheduled moto length. We dropped down to 15-minute motos yesterday to catch up. We have caught up enough where this is going to be a 20-minute moto. So back to the original moto times, giving everybody their laps because championships are on the line now. This is our first third moto, so we want to let them run it out the way they were supposed to, so a 20-minute moto here in 16-24 to 24 college, and Ryan Surratt trying to win this title. Got to watch for uh, Ashton Dickinson. He was on the 16 Yamaha making some passes, trying to get up into the top three. He's got to try to catch Will Lofstrom, Sam Redman, Richard Jackson for some podium real estate. Now on uh, racertv.com, we're watching the number 21, of uh, Redmond, he is in third. Pretty consistent, this group. Redmond, Jackson, Surratt. But uh, Surratt trying to edge them right now. He's got a little bit of a cushion in the moto and also in the points if it ends like this. Uh, we talk about weather here. I mean, we talk about it before we come into the race, and then we come here and it proves itself because we're dealt with rain, <laughs> heat, humidity, and all that. Uh, Texas can be pretty unpredictable. What have you guys traditionally had to deal with uh, when you're in the springtime there? At you know, uh, the amazing part about it is, is this track has developed so well because you cannot water it any but better than yes. Mother Nature provides. That's yes, true. Yep. And, and usually when we go into the springtime, Daytona has to deal with it sometimes. Uh, we've de dealt with it too, Daytona being that uh, that has two days of racing in, in Supercross for yeah. the RC race. And then for the JS7 Spring Championship, uh, we're dealing with four days of racing. It's springtime in Texas, and that's springtime thunderstorms. Uh, there we go. Okay, that's what I was figuring, something yeah. like that. So, so there's always a threat. It, it's definitely back in the day when it was, and I say back in the day, a lot of these riders that are out on this track today didn't see the, the likes of Lake Whitney. Uh, some of the A riders may have, but that's about it. Uh, but that was the same thing. It was always the same experience in, in the state of Texas. You get that Gulf Coast moisture coming up in the springtime, meeting with the cold air, hot air, warm air off the Gulf, and you're going to get thunderstorms at least one day. Ashton Dickinson has made the move on the 35 of Colin Thomas. So getting closer and closer, Ashton Dickinson fifth. Will Ostrom back to fourth. Oh, don't mess up my flow, bro. You good? <laughs> 
All right, Kevin Kozad, MX Rooms for Jesus. I am not, there's no person I'm happier to see at this race than him because that means our opening ceremonies are going to go off without a hitch if we get Kevin in here. And there's really, that's the only thing that scares me. You get Kevin Kozad, we get the Leanne Rhymes National Anthem dialed in. The rest of the day, we can take you through it. Halfway through this moto, yeah, it's going to feel a lot longer since we've been running 15-minute motos until now. But we're back to the 20-minute format. Ryan Surratt has got this. It's his race and championship to win or lose. Seven-second lead halfway through. And if he wins the moto, he wins the title with 1-3-1 one, one moto scores in uh, College 24. Now, you're part of, uh, when you mentioned the majors and the rule structure being similar, Tom Shields here from uh, uh, the JS7 Spring Championship. These classes seem so random to people that don't follow this thing intimately. Like, why is there a 16 to 24? And why is there a 125 BC and a two different schoolboy classes? The amount of work that you guys have to do in concert with the manufacturers, trying to figure out where the bikes are, the ages, what's appropriate. Man, that is just head spinning stuff. Well, for sure, <laughs> yeah, it sure is. I mean, we're always studying uh, the folks at MX Sports. Uh, always like to collaborate with them, obviously, because their resources are, are incredible uh, with 22,000 riders that are trying to qualify for right, this event. Right. So uh, to look at their numbers and make sure and look at my numbers uh, from just just from James Stewart's event, yep. then uh, then what we want to see is growth. Yeah. So sometimes from from our standpoint at Freestone, we're looking at it as we can take a little bit more risk yeah. than some something like this at this level. MX Sports is working a lot closer with the manufacturers while we do as well, and we follow that format of, of national classes. Yeah. Uh, there's also filler classes that are not necessarily for the promoter's pocketbook, but necessarily for giving an opportunity for the industry at the 50cc and the 65cc level to grow. So there are additional classes at that event. You bet. That's cool. You bet. So definitely when a riders come to Loretta's, uh, well, in the 50s and the vet classes, yep. their choices is one class. Yeah. Everybody else gets two classes. Whereas all of the other classes, uh, well, uh, at Daytona, I think they give you three classes to choose from. Yeah. All the other events at Mammoth, Minios, the riders, it's an open registration. So they, right. can, they can take as many classes on if they want to, obviously, as long as they qualify. They fit, yes. Yep, yep. No, for sure. And even sometimes at your local level, it's important for, for me as, as a promoter in Texas, I want to see my local riders come to this size event in order to see what the industry already provides to them. So then they go, wait a minute, I want to go strive for that. Yeah. Okay, I may not be Ryder Francesco, I may not be Jet Reynolds, I may not be Matthew LeBlanc. Yep. But what I want to be is like them. And, and at that stage, already at their young ages, you're already finding five and six and s probably even seven-year-olds that are already watching them in, in awe, and they're, and they're still growing as well. Wow. Yeah. So five-year-olds are looking up to, like, eight-year-olds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like the role models. Yep. Your no, role for model, sure. You're eight years old. Got to be professional on and off the track. Kids will be watching. Five-year-olds are watching you, eight-year-olds. <laughs> I think that's really true. Uh, more so than ever now, a day and age of social media and all that, uh, these little guys are actually real superstars uh, they are off the track. It's amazing. You know what? Yep. I, I don't know. Well, you're kind of a superstar yourself. You've got a, a few thousand followers I, yourself. I, yeah. I don't think they really care older. what we're wearing, but they do yeah. care what Ryder and all those other yeah, riders are doing. Yeah, they're not basing any style or fashion advice on, uh, on us. Yeah, well, I kind of... Although you look know. quite professional, I'll give you that. I know that a lot of it is fun uh, uh, functional as well. Thank but you. But I like the style that you're bringing. Well, it, it, thank God for uh, UV protection and protecting our skin out there. Yeah. Uh, Tom Shield spending a little too much time at Texas motocross tracks in the sun. <laughs> so go, i got to make sure you got UV protected clothing on. No, I fell asleep on the top of a van one time when I was 16 years old in Galveston, Texas, and I woke up with second and third degree That's burns. what did it. Yep. That's what did it. You That's fell asleep in the sun yep. in Texas. On top of a van. At the beach. I don't want to ask any more about that. What led to this? On top of a van at the beach, were you laying out? Were you well, planning I, on tanning? Hey, back then it was shag carpet in the van, too. Oh, okay. Again, we've gone as far as we can go on that story. All right, Tom Shields from uh, Freestone County Raceway here at JS7 uh, Spring Championship. Let me update you on this race. I got one more thing to ask you about that event, though, in just a second. Yeah. Uh, Surratt still in the lead. Richard Jackson, Sam Redman, no changes in the podium order, and that has been – 
Oh, somebody just stalled there in the corner after the Ten Commandments, though. That was a Honda. I'm just trying to see if that upset the order or if that was a lap rotter. Uh, anyway, I was going to ask you about the James Stewart involvement, actually, in that event. That's uh, pretty cool. Does things at the event and even uh, some things afterwards. Yeah, for sure. Every class champion gets to go to James Stewart's house in November, uh, right before many O's. Uh, it's, it's something that James wanted to do. He wanted to provide uh, a way that he thought, you know, it would have been cool if he would have been able to go to uh, Michelle Bell's house and go ride where he trained or, wow, yeah. or to David Bailey's house and, and go up there with the professor and go see what the professor was doing to, uh, to Bailey at that time. And so – those, uh, those are the things that resonated with him and what he wanted to do. So, James, that was the first thing that he told me about the event is I want them to come to my house and I want them to see what the Ponderosa is like in, in what he developed around his own style. You know what I'm going to call it? He what? wanted to let them see where the stew is made. Ah. This is where the stew it's, it's, it's made. You like that? It's, this, it's the stew soup. The stew soup, yes. This I is don't where know. The stew is, this is where the stew is made. And we got a battle for second. Sam Redman on the 34, or sorry, Sam Redman on the 21 getting passed by Richard Jackson on the 21. They've gone back and forth a couple of times here, 34 and 21. Oh. Another rider stacks it up in these ruts. Oh, and that's going to hurt the 21. Redman getting held up. So Richard Jackson up to second, but Jackson's got to hope that there's a problem for Ryan Surratt if he wants the title, and they're 10 seconds behind him. Yeah, it looks like everybody has definitely settled into this race now. And for a while there, I thought Redmond was going to make a charge. He was close enough, three seconds. He stayed there. Yep. Stayed there at three seconds, and then he dropped back a little bit, and then so did Jackson as well. So a big one for Surratt. Won a couple titles, I believe, as a schoolboy rider here a few years ago in the 125 days. Uh, now on the bigger bike and trying to get it done in College Boy. Wait a minute. Don't count out the 21. Sam Redmond coming back on Jackson. There they are together. That is for second and third. And I believe that might affect second and third overall between them as well. Time running out. Two and a half minutes left in this moto. Third set of motos, folks. After this, it will be the 25-plus. And a lot on the line there is Robbie Raynard's trying to win the title while riding a YZ125. But remember, these two first two classes, both this one right now, college class, and the 25-plus, they have had the worst weather of all, it started raining day the, one. Day one, yeah. So they rode in the mud, their first moto. And then the track was getting good for their second moto and their moto right before it, C class. It started raining while those guys were on the line. So the two motos in this class and also 25 plus have been absolute mudders. It's not going to be a mudder for their third moto. So it's hard to say if the results, they could change because their track will be totally different. The beauty of that is, is that Robbie Rayner has came here and proved that just because it's a mutter race doesn't mean that the four-stroke's going to have advantage. No. Rider, rider, rider. Yes. It, all about rider input. Well, I think some of the riders are hoping that when it's rough and hot instead of muddy, that maybe they can swing the advantage back their way. Robbie has admitted he's not been training a lot. He's been working more with his riders than on himself. Yeah. So I think some of the guys are hoping if we get him on a rough, hot moto, maybe he'll get tired. Maybe we could beat him that way because they couldn't beat him in the mud. He said to me earlier this week that Robbie uh, had trained. This is the least he had rode in any year given in his life, which wow. spanning in this industry is not just a lot in his amateur career, like ever. Period. Period. Wow. Yeah. He said this is the least amount of time that he's ever ridden prior to Loretta's. All right. So or we'll any see if he can lock it down. 25 plus will be coming up after this. Amsoil last lap. Ryan Surratt trying to get it done. Uh, Tom Shields, thanks for stopping by. You bet, Jason. And uh, how can people get more info on the majors and also on the uh, JS7? Well, Spring to Championship. go to the majors, all they got to do is go to mxsports.com. Uh, all the majors are there. Also, they can find it under uh, AmericanMotocross.com. That's cool. And that's where all the major events uh, information is, along with our schedules. All right. Uh, everybody's schedules are out. The next time that we're going to see everybody at the major event is down in Florida at Gatorback. We're going to go see Mr. Windkern down there. Thanksgiving weekend, and then that'll be kicking off all the 2017 bites and introducing yeah. on the track. Yeah, as Kevin Kelly was saying, it's, it's kind of like the fiscal year. By the way, we're watching the 51 of Ryan Surratt, who appears to have the Moto win and championship coming his way. Um, the fiscal year, they say in business, you know, it's like June to June. It doesn't start January 1st. Yeah, in amateur motocross racing, this is like December 31st. Yep. The year is over after Loretta's, and they consider November the beginning of the year 
when we go to Florida. And that's, yeah, when you see the new bike's gear and, and all that. For sure. Yep. Well, Jason, I appreciate it. Good luck to all my Texas riders out there yep. the rest of the week. And, uh, and thanks to MX Sports for always putting on a great event every year. Appreciate it. Just in time, last corner, Ryan Surratt's going to do it. He is going to go 1-3-1 one, one, and win the College Boy Championship for 2016. Nicely done. National Championship for Ryan Surratt. Battling the entire moto was uh, Richard Jackson and Sam Redman. And I believe Redman's going to come up with the second place spot. That might be second overall as well. Jackson and Redman had some great battles all week long. Surratt won the first moto, started it out right. Moto 2, not quite what he wanted, but he was able to salvage that third, keep himself in title contention, and now he's looking at a, another number one plate here at the ranch. We'll have our Race Tech post-race interview coming up here in just a moment. Thank you, Tom Shields. Thanks, everybody, at the Freestone County Raceway in Wortham, the JS7 Spring Championship. He mentioned uh, the Ricky Carmichael Amateur Supercross down at Daytona. That'll be on uh, March 12th and 13th. This is uh, going to be four championships for Surratt here at Loretta's, won a 250C title along with those two schoolboy championships. He swept them in 2013, won both schoolboy divisions. So four championships now for Surratt here at the AMA Amateur National at Loretta Lynn Ranch. So nicely done for Ryan. And Kevin Kelly will be talking to him. We, this is our first championship, so we've got a lot of things to get together. Number one plates, trophies, moto medals, and uh, everything else. I believe we'll also have uh, Kit Bigelow, the AMA, down there as part of the ceremony as well since we're handing out national titles for the first time this year. 25-plus class will be your next division. Yeah, see, there's the AMA heavies. We've got the shield trophy. We've got the AMA hat on the motorcycle. So a lot to coordinate down there, and that's why I strategically did all the podiums yesterday, and now I'll leave Kevin Kelly in the ditch and let him do all the work when it's Moto 3s and it's really difficult and when it's hot. I've heard that it's hot, but I wouldn't know. I've just been inside this announcer's tower all day. It's been great weather up here. So Surratt wins it. Redmond and Jackson had a good battle, second and third. Colin Thomas, Will Lofstrom, that's your top five. Then Ashton Dickinson, Cody Schock, Tyler Pantley, Addison Emery, and Logan Parks. That rounds out your top ten. And we've got your race tech post-race interview coming your way on racertv.com and also right here live at the ranch in just a moment. Hey, Jason, uh, we're down here at the Race Tech Podium and we're ready to get this party started. How about it? Let's see and let's check in with our third place finisher. Where are you at? Richard Jackson, our third place finisher. If I can get third place, Richard Jackson. Here he comes. Kind of hard to hear. The bikes are all motoring around. All right, folks, let's hear it. Put your hands together for Richard Jackson. Am I, am I wrong here? Did I get the numbers wrong? Third place finisher, where are we at? Okay. Samuel Redmond in. How about that? My first podium, the championship moto, and I've already blown it, Kip. I'm such a pro. All right, Samuel Redmond, come on up here, buddy. All right, I was right, so we're gonna go three, two, one. That's the way we do the podiums here. Third place finisher, let's say hello to him. Third place, Richard Jackson. Put that around your sweaty, sweaty head. Folks, let him hear, make some noise for Richard Jackson. Richard, great ride out there. You earned it, dude. It's so hot out there. Tell me how rough that track is. Oh, man, it's, it's pretty brutal. Uh, my trainer, Nario, is he, he's got a rough track, so we, I think we were prepared for it. Um, I don't know. I just had a little tip over before the Ten Commandments and took a little energy out of me, but I was able to come back and get third, so we're happy with that. 
Hey, that's not bad. Hey, can I get one of you guys to grab this whole shot check? You grab that. Grab that big whole shot check. You got the Bell Whole Shot Award as well. So we're going to let you throw that up nice and high. Take some photos of that. The Bell Helmets Whole Shot Award went to Samuel Redmond as well. Third place, not bad, man. He starts first. You get third. Who would you like to thank? Uh, first off, i got to thank the Lord Jesus Christ for keeping me safe. Um, my trainer, Naru Izzy, picked me a good gate. Uh, my mechanic, Gary, has had the bike ready to go all week. And, uh, man, elusive, faction, roost. Uh, my mom, my dad, Rodney Talbot. Uh, man, there's so many people I just can't think right now. Great work. One more time, your third place finisher. Let's hear it for Richard Jackson. We'll move on down the line, and now we will get Samuel Redmond up here. Come on up here, Sammy Redmond. Get your silver medal, my friend. There you go. Sam has got some fans up in the house here. Sam, put that around your head. You earn it. These guys are getting taller and taller. You're like, what, six foot four here? What would you do in the NFL Combine, dude? What's your vertical? Tell me about that race, buddy. Silver medal in the race and uh, second place overall. Well, uh, I started, I uh, came out of the first turn in third, and then uh, the top two guys, uh, Ryan and uh, Jackson, were uh, all in front of me. So I knew I had to try to make it happen. And uh, uh, Richard made, made his, I think he crashed, and I was able to catch up to him and make the pass. With, uh, but Ryan was too far gone. And, uh, but it was a pretty good ride. I wish we got that number one, though. I'd like to thank my mom, my dad, uh, One Stop Motorsports, SM11 Suspension, Gatewise Cycles, uh, Brop Supply, Fly Racing, FMF, Moto C, Split Designs, um, Katie, Bryce, JoJo, Russ, and uh, I think that's it. All right, hey, there's that smile. How about it? One more time for our th second place finisher, Mr. Sam Redmond. Great work, Sam. Great job. Now, we will bring the man of the hour with 131 one Moto Scores. Folks, let him here at the number 51. He is your champ. Ryan Surratt. Ryan, come on up here. The first champ we are going to crown here at the ranch, the 35th annual. 131 Moto Scores. Were you nervous going into that uh, third final moto here? Uh, not too bad. You know, uh, I was just hoping the rain held off, and uh, it did, and uh, I knew I could win. So I just got myself out to a good start and uh, just rode my own race and uh, tried to get around the lopper safety safely, and uh, that's it. All right, let's bring Mr. Kip Bigelow from the AMA. Kip's got some hardware for you. Shake that hand. Principal Kip Bigelow from the AMA. You've got the number one plate. Ryan, who would you like to thank for getting you up here? You also got a shield as well. Who do you want to thank? Uh, my mom, my dad, my sister, my whole family. Evan, uh, Varner Motorsports, Honda, Fly Racing, x brand Goggles, Garnet Boots, uh, No Toil, Spectral Oil, and anyone else I forgot. Thank you. All right, let's hear it for the champ, Ryan Surratt. He is your first winner here at the 35th annual Loretta Lens. Guys, we are done here at the Race Tech podium. We'll toss it back up to the tower just in time for the start of the next moto.